Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. We're about to take a deeper dive into the world of statistics as we once again put research in focus. And joining me now is Professor Zubin Garamani of the University of Cambridge. And just a reminder, Professor Garamani will be taking your questions, so please submit your queries through that chat tool. It's right over there. Submit those questions. And uh, welcome, Zubin. I understand uh, you're going to talk to us about uh, building an automated statistician. It sounds like something I could have used last week when my taxes were due. Uh, maybe a little automated help on calculating deductions. Uh, but seriously, what do you mean by automated statistician? Uh, hi, Chris. Um, yeah, so an automated statistician is uh, meant to be an automatic system that can take data that somebody gives it and it can make sense out of the data. It can try to understand that data, visualize it, and maybe even feed back to the person that gave the data some interpretable explanation of what's in that data. Are there sort of weird things in the data, uh, outliers, as statisticians call them? Uh, is there a particular interesting structure in the data? What kinds of models are good models for the data? So I'm very excited about this. So there's the overview. Can you give us some examples of what such an automated statistician might do? Um, so uh, just uh, in terms of machine learning, one of the things that I found over uh, my career in machine learning is that people come up with a lot of different kinds of models that could be applied to data. And it's a very human intensive, laborious thing where, you know, a scientist or somebody in commerce um, or even just a sort of a, a user of the internet that has some interesting data uh, would really need to interact with a specialist of some kind. And um, our goal for the automated statistician is uh, really to be able to um, get that specialist out of the loop to get the computer to do something intelligent with that data. So to give you an example, uh, you know, one of the most commercially interesting kinds of data these days is um, data from recommender systems. You know, the kind of thing where you uh, are shopping online and you've bought a few things or you've viewed a few movies and the system is recommending to you, uh, you know, new uh, products or movies that you might want to buy. Now, underlying all these recommender systems that everybody is used to using uh, are machine learning methods. But those machine learning methods have been um, handcrafted by a few experts, and each company might hire a few experts to do that sort of work for them. And what we want to do is uh, we have a huge space of interesting models in machine learning. We want to be able to come up with uh, ways in which uh, algorithms can take new data, like, for example, this kind of recommender data, which is you know, thousands or millions of users and thousands or hundreds of thousands of products and sort of imagine a big table of data like that. They can take that data and automatically run lots of different methods on it and come up with um, good interpretable hypotheses for users, companies, mm -hmm. and even scientists. So recommender systems, like you said, is something that we're probably already familiar with, even if we didn't know what it was. Like Netflix, it tells me what movies it thinks I might like exactly. based on what I watch, and it thinks I want to watch My Little Pony because my daughter's been on there all day long. So that's the sort of thing we're talking about? That's right. Okay. So um, Yeah, that's one example, yeah. So how do you train... Um, I mean, other examples... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stomping on you here. I just want to know, how do you train a computer to parse all this data effectively and with you know minimal human intervention, as you said? Well, um... So the, the great thing is that, uh, I mean, this is what not just myself, but the whole field of machine learning is, is working on. Uh, we're working on developing algorithms that learn from data. And as you've heard from uh, Sebastian in, in your previous interview, one of the foundations of all of this automation of learning is this idea of uh, Bayesian methods, mm -hmm. a sort of automatic methodology for computers to do reasoning under uncertainty. And so that's the core of the method that we're going to use in our automated statistician. 
Uh, obviously, that's a pretty difficult concept. My brain isn't as big as yours. Can you help me <laughs> maybe understand it with some simple examples? Uh, yeah, I, I would love to, actually. And, you know, uh, the history of how I stumbled into this is, uh, is kind of interesting. So maybe I'll, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about it, that from, from a personal point sure. of view. So, um, you know, I started out interested in understanding how the brain works, kind of building computational models of brain function, and at the same time trying to build artificially intelligent systems, um, something that a lot of computer scientists are interested in. And nowadays with big data, uh, you know, we're suddenly looking at really practical problems like this automated statistician. Now, the really beautiful thing uh, for me is that uh, this idea of Bayes' rule uh, underlies uh, models of how the brain might work, models of artificial intelligence, and how to get computers to handle big data. So the idea of Bayesian statistics uh, is actually very simple. It says that probability is the way we should represent uncertainty. And learning from data is all about uncertainty. Uncertainty, given the data that you've observed uh, in terms of what predictions or recommendations you should make. And the mathematics of uncertainty uh, is very simple. It was laid out by Thomas Bayes in the 1700s. Probability theory and Bayesian uh, statistics is just a, a follow-on from probability theory. It's just like you know, Newton and calculus is sort of the mathematics of rates of change. Probability is the mathematics of uncertainty. Another one of those phrases that got me scratching my head, that non-parametric probability. <laughs> Can you explain that? Yeah, so, um, so my own research uh, puts together two ideas. One of them is uh, this uh, Bayesian use of probability to represent uncertainty, and we need that to build intelligent systems, build, build recommenders, build automated statisticians. The other thing is this word non-parametrics. And non-parametrics is such, sort of a bit of jargon, but just to explain it simply, it's the idea that uh, the world is a complicated place. So our models shouldn't be simple linear models from high school or you know, college textbooks, they should be flexible models that can capture a lot of that complexity in the real world. And non-parametrics is just the technical term that people use for these flexible models. So we need these flexible models and we need uncertainty and probability. We put these together, we can do amazing things. So if I understand this correctly, and it's entirely possible that I don't, you're working to teach computers to do this sophisticated Bayesian non-parametric probability analysis. You just feed them the data, they come up with the inferences, right? Sort of? Yeah, that's right. And you know, we want to hide all that complexity from the users and the companies that might want to use this kind of thing. Because you know, not everybody's going to want to be an expert. So all that complexity should be behind the hood and the interaction with this automated statistician should be as natural as a conversation or a report, a written report about your data with some pictures and things like that. Um, so, you know, we are not trying to sell the complexity to people. Uh, we want things to be easy to use. I would imagine, though, that this is a rather major undertaking in, involving many different oh, disciplines yeah. in a fairly long time frame, right? Yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is a big project. You know, it's been sitting in the back of my head for, oh, many years, but now is really the time to get going. And, you know, there's so much excitement around this area, and I'm not the only one. I'm collaborating with lots of people, a great team of colleagues at MIT, some friends at Harvard. Uh, you know, I work with Microsoft and Google, and there's just a lot of excitement around doing this kind of thing. And the other interesting thing is, you know, this isn't just about uh, users and companies. It can also have an impact on the sciences. Mm -hmm. So I work a lot with um, scientists from different fields like biology and economics and, you know, cosmology. And they're all sitting on piles of amazing data and they want to have tools that they can just, uh, you know, feed their data into. And at least at the first pass, it gives them some reasonable interpretations of the data. So in the long run, that's what I'm shooting for. Of course, it, it's a pretty big project. You mentioned there the long run. So I won't count on having that automaton do my taxes next year. But what are some concrete applications maybe that you anticipate from your automated statistician? 
Um, so, you know, the beauty of some of these things is that uh, you can build them and then different people will use them in different ways. Sort of like, you know, if you're, if you're building some, uh, some web infrastructure, you don't know how people will use them. If you put out some data, you don't know how people will use it. You know, if uh, uh, you're Google and you put out maps, people use them in all sorts of ways. So we want to make this very open. We're going to build a tool and different people are going to hopefully come in and try to upload different kinds of data onto our automated statistician. And that'll just uh, throw up lots of challenges. We'll have to keep doing research to make sure this kind of thing works on people's different kinds of data. But we're not working on one particular application. We're trying to build a generic system um, where you might be able to feed it a table of whatever your favorite data is, uh, maybe an Excel spreadsheet, you know, maybe something else. And it's just going to try to make some sense of it and, and give you something back. Um, so, you know, recommenders I mentioned, scientific data, you know, uh, things like genomic analysis data might be an interesting um, case study, something I've also worked on. Biomedical data in general, like, you know, if you're correlating certain uh, genetic factors with diseases. That's a very common type of data a lot of people analyze. And we'd love to be able to provide a tool that at least uh, does some initial analysis for people. We're not going to replace the specialists, the experts, but we're going to be able to help them out. And we're going to be able to hopefully help meet the, the huge challenge in terms of data scientists that you know, the world needs over the next few years. Fascinating stuff, Zubin. We are out of time. Thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us.